Um, I've got a lovely job, which is just to set up a little bit about South by Southwest, talk to you about um, the panel members for this evening, um, and really just try and give a bit of a theme, I think, to South by Southwest. So I was a South by Southwest uh, virgin this year. It's, um, I guess it's a festival that I've wanted to go to for a really long time. Uh, but as I've said to somebody, I've had um, a number of children in quite a small space of time, so I've had to sort of watch it um, on my Twitter stream, which I guess most of you have had to do, which actually at times can be quite irritating. So anyway, this was my first time, um, and it was pretty incredible for me. Um, a, it was quite incredible to be able to leave a baby and a toddler behind, which I thought would be heartbreaking, and it actually was really fun. Um, <laughs> but apart from that, I didn't, didn't tell my husband that. Um, I guess what I found so interesting about South by Southwest is actually from an outsider's perspective, watching how it's changed over the years. So actually South by Southwest has been around since uh, 1987, which I thought was quite interesting. The thing that really, really just opened my eyes were just how many people were there. So for the interactive section, I guess, I don't know if you know how it works, but it's a 10 day long festival. The first five days is, is the interactive festival. The second is uh, music and film. But the amount of delegates for the interactive section were almost 31,000 people, which I just found absolutely incredible. It was an increase of 25% year on year. Um, and it is kind of overwhelming. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit why I think it's like Glastonbury. Um, so I think, first of all, you've got my Glastonbury pictures on the left, not that I've actually sat next to Gwynny. Um, but but, so, but um, Glastonbury is full of superstars. And actually, the, the, the sort of the wonderful thing about Glastonbury is that actually you can get up close and personal to people that um, have changed the world. Uh, and I think it's the same thing with South by Southwest. So, you know, it's pretty cool to have Tim Berners-Lee taking pictures of you. And that, that's pretty exciting. Um, it's pretty exciting to see Grumpy Cat. Um, and again, if you've been reading any of the blogs or any of the Twitter feed, um, it, it, the, the undisputed star of, um, of South by Southwest this year was actually Grumpy Cat. And in fact, um, Lawrence, who is, wherever, Lawrence, Lawrence, who's up, up later, uh, we actually bypassed the queue. The queue took, I think it took about two and a half hours yeah. to go and meet Grumpy Cat, which was actually the longest queue in South by Southwest. So it's full of superstars, um, which is kind of interesting. It's also full of queues, bloody hell. So you kind of queue for everything. Um, and I think it's, it's really interesting because actually part of the queuing strategy <laughs> defines where you're going to go. So I tried to get into a session on Google Glass, didn't get in, tried to then go across town to see a session on Lego Minecraft, didn't get in, tried to get in. And actually, there is a bit of frustration because with 31,000 people, there's a lot of toing and froing, and I think it's the same in Glastonbury, uh, less mud. Um, it's sometimes rude. So um, I, I was staying um, out in a place called South Congress, um, actually in an Airbnb, um, an Airbnb house instead of a hotel, uh, but near the very famous Austin Motel, and you'll probably see that, um, that picture from other people. And it is sometimes rude because there are 31,000 people, all of whom having quite a good time. Um, but it's also quite wise as well, and I quite like that one, which was skinny jeans don't make you look skinny. Nothing really to do with the festival, but I guess the ethos of Austin as a place to have something like this is really important because Austin, although it's in Texas, it's pretty alternative and it's pretty hippie and it's pretty liberal and that's quite interesting, so um, it's wise. Um, in the same way that Glastonbury has breakout stars, so I was talking to people yesterday and they were talking about um, the Scissor Sisters, I think it was back in 2000... Uh, Two maybe, but anyway, there was that. That was really their sort of their platform where they sort of they sprung into consciousness. Um, and one of the breakout stars who I saw is a guy called Cory Booker, who is the mayor of Newark, and he was unbelievable. Um, I sort of went to him on a punt. I sort of knew that he was quite active on Twitter, and he just completely reframed how I thought politicians were using social channels to connect and what modern democracy is all about. And I cried at one point. And the room was full of people who'd actually bought tickets from the public, taking their children to come and meet him. It was unbelievable. And if he isn't um, the American president at one point, or at least a US presidential candidate, I will eat my proverbial hat. So there are some real sort of superstars. In fact, he was actually voted, um, it's a terrible picture of him, but that was from my camera. He was actually voted the, um, the speaker of the event. So sometimes it's people you don't expect who sort of break out. Um, I think the other thing, like I guess, like Glastonbury, is that it's full of events. So at the end of the day, you sort of meet up for beer, and you know, Martin would tell me I went to go and see this thing, and I'd kick myself, going, "God, I went to see this, and it wasn't as good." And so, 
th th there's a constant bit of, I wish I'd been there. And I guess my, my I wish I'd been there is this absolute mentalist called Cody Wilson um, who prints guns. And he's terrifying because he's a f believer in um, whichever amendment it is, which is the amendment, the, the, um, the right to bear arms, uh, but using 3D printing to print guns. He can't print, print bullets yet, so he uses real bullets. They fire real bullets. And I find that extraordinary. And I kick myself that I didn't go and see him. I went to go and see the other 3D printers, which were all quite boring because they talked about shoes and belts, and I should have gone to see guns. Anyway, um, but that's amazing that you can get that, that kind of sort of, that kind of, um, uh, that kind of speaker. And the parties the next morning, you maybe wish you hadn't gone to, so Martin was saying, how is it possible that people stayed up and partied all night? And then they were there the next day, because they were. I mean, they were people the next day at 9 o'clock looking bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And then Martin actually said that later on in the day, there were lots of people asleep in corners. Um, but it is an interesting. It's a sort of um, burning both candle, candle at both ends, I think, is the expression. Um, but I guess the interesting thing about Glastonbury is that actually you do have a great support system, uh, which is the IPA. Um, so thank you again, because they are brilliant. I think Nigel will talk a little bit about the IPA. Um, and the sort of the support system that they set up. Um, that blog is still live and it's got um, daily entries. I think there were 20 of us who sort of, um, I guess became sort of part of Team IPA blogging daily. Though actually it's kind of hard when you're in the sort of the mentalness of it to try and step back and to think what are the themes. But actually even some of just the sort of the raw reactions to speakers and to ideas and to people they met, um, I think are fascinating. So that's up there.